Hello and welcome back to The Single Malt Review. I'm Tim and I'm bringing you today a wee sample of Gordon Graham's so-called Black Bottle. Gordon Graham's. Burn Stewart Distillers Black Bottle, it should probably say, because they're the, uh, they're the ones who own it today. Um, one in a very long line of people who have owned Black Bottle in some form or another. But never mind, this was going to be a casual dram outside in the nice weather, but um, being springtime, it has uh, decided to pour with rain, absolutely. So never mind, we'll just um, bring it on inside and do it here. It shan't be too much of a problem. So, Black Bottle. You could almost call this one a modern classic. Not because it's... Um, the tremendous whiskey or anything, but because it's both modern and a classic at the same time, and I'll explain why. This, like maybe no other blend, has undergone quite a few permutations over the course of its long, long life, and most recently in, I think it was uh, 2013, I'm sure it was 2013, they did a really, really massive rebranding and reformulation for various reasons probably 50-50 between, one, it wasn't all that popular. It was popular among people who liked it because of its, um, because it was the peaty blend, you know, the Isla blend, a blend for um, people that liked Isla whiskies but didn't want to put down the dosh for a uh, single malt, and maybe fair enough, it's getting pretty pricey over there these days. Um, the other reason I think they changed it was because its original claim to fame was that it contained whiskey of each of the Isla distilleries in operation. And that sounds finicky and expensive, and it probably was, albeit microscopic quantities of these were probably going in. Um, why, why bother? Why bother? So it got a big, big reformulation and rebrand, new bottle, everything in 2013, and it was more or less heralded as a very, very positive change. Now, at least among the whiskey people that I keep up with, everyone thought they were onto a good thing. Um, if you came to the whiskey for the fact that it was very, very peated, you know, the peated blend, then you would probably be morbidly disappointed because that was the biggest change. It could really no longer be called a peat dominant blend, or even really a peated blend. If you were to say, take in the nose, it's there, but I wouldn't call it significant anymore. If anything, it's got more of a Speyside style nose to it. So I suppose the question is, in sort of, um, not homogenizing, but maybe more normalizing its style, did Black Bottle lose its identity as a unique blend and becoming more like a great many other blends as it um, ratcheted down the peat? I suppose we will just have to find out. Like I said, people are positive on this one. I haven't really followed Black Bottle um, up until this 2013. This is the, um, the first one I've had. I never even tried the old version myself, so it's only by word of mouth that I really have any experience with it. So I'm going in fairly blind, but I will give you some, um, some notion to its quality standing on its own, which is usually how we do things at the Single Want Review anyway, so never mind. Like I said, on the nose, Really very space idea and not not overly complex, which, I mean, you'd expect from a no-age statement um, blend. Oh, I should say, they used to do a 10-year-old and even a 15-year-old um, some time ago. In the 90s, I think I saw them around, probably before I was of the uh, legal age to buy any whiskey. But um, those have both been discontinued, so I suppose it's quite unique now that um, it exists as a blend that's just just what it is. You can buy Black Bottle these days and only Black Bottle. There's no 12 year old, there's no special edition, there's no cask strength, there's no nothing. There's Black Bottle and that's it. So I suppose that um, simplifies things somewhat. You either like it or you don't. So there is that. Mm. So yes, space side. A bit of heather, honey, fruits, apple, pear. Dare I say it's like prescriptive. The smoke there is it's noticeably Isla peat, but it's very, very soft and not particularly, it's not very tangy, not very striking, not very hard edged. Funny enough, it reminds me quite a lot of Buna Harbin, the more uh, gentle, gently peated Isla whiskey. And that's probably a fair enough pick, I think, because Burn Stewart's owns Buna Harbin. Uh, Buna Harbin and Tobermory are there to... Um, Isla and Island distilleries respectively and so that probably gives them some ammunition for uh, cheap peated whiskey um, with which to put in this blend so I'd say that's a fair um, a fair amount of what's uh, in there Isla whiskey wise. As for the uh, non-Isla single malts that make up the bill here I really don't know. 
Mm. So, simple enough, but pleasing enough on the nose. Not too raw, not too much evidence of grain. Mm. And very, very fruity on the palate. The space, I think, just keeps on going. It's quite striking, really. The peat is, if anything, even less evident on the palate than it was on the nose. Had you given that to me blind without um, even allowing me to uh, smell the nose, I might not have even picked that as a uh, blend with any peated component in it. So that, that'll give you an idea of just how slight the peating is these days. Mm. So it fruits, quite a lot of bolt, multi barley, quite a lot of honey. It's very, very quite juicy, quite mouth-watering in its character. It's not at all stuffy, and the oak in there, and there is quite a bit of oak for a no age statement blend. It's a very fresh oak, I suspect largely American. Not too much, um, not too much sherry in there at all, I think. Obviously, coloured and chilled fills it in at 40%, so we'll completely dispense with any, um, any uh, imaginings as to what the colour might be telling us, so never mind, never mind. Mm. But it's, if nothing else, very Moorish. Once it leads to another pretty easily, really. And that's not a bad feature for a no age statement blend. And though it's good enough on its own, it won't, um, won't beat you up for having an ice cube in there or probably no, don't mix it. Don't mix it. Don't mix most blends or scotch whiskey. Ultimately, it's just um, there's better spirits for it. I'll go. I'll have that rant later. You know, never mind. Different episode. Get Dave on for that one, and he can um, he can espouse the qualities of the um, what do they call it? They have Pauling cocktail with um, Isla whiskey and uh, mint in it. Oh, I forget. He'll remind it. He'll remind you. Never mind. This one, I think, I would recommend it as far as blends go, but for a very different reason than I'd recommend the previous incarnation of Black Bottle. If you're looking for a Isla blend, then probably something like uh, Finlagen or something like that. Um, it's one of these sort of uh, fake distillery names, um, blending you know, brands. They're more, they've probably taken up the mantle of the, um, the go-to peated blended whiskey these days. This one is more... It's difficult to really classify it now because it's, it is so similar to so many other blended whiskies. It's gone for the middle of the road, which is a pretty daring choice, I think, but it does it fairly, fairly well. So if you're looking for something in the spectrum of not really a Shivers, because it's got more body than that, something between a Shivers and a Johnny Walker 12-year-old, say, that's probably where I'd seat this in terms of flavour. It has a little bit of peat, but not nearly as much as the Johnny Walker 12-year-old. That's got significantly more. Um, but neither is it as gentle or, dare I say, uh, bland as the Shivers 12. So that might give you some sort of mental taste profile with which to um, codify that one as to whether you want it or not. As for scores, keeping in mind this is a blend score, I think this is fairly strong. I'd be perfectly happy giving this one a 76, which is not bad for a... Not a bottom shelf whiskey, but it's pretty pretty close to the floor. Let's call it um, one and a half shelf whiskey. Mm. No, I think that's fair enough. Seventy six. Um, not a bad one, and pretty low uh, low investment to um, come along and have a go and try it. Um, mm. Anyway, this has been just a quickie from the single malt review. We'll have something maybe a little more um, eclectic for you coming up, but. Um, Stick around until then, and uh, we will see you then. Sláinte.